Hi everyone, I'm Richard. And I'm Tom. And recently we overclocked previously locked Skylake chips from Intel, the Core i3-6100 and the Core i5-6500. We got some pretty decent results. But weren't you unimpressed with the i3 results? Yeah, I expected more, I'll be honest with you. You know, when you think about it, an overclockable i3, 4.4, 4.5 gigahertz, some of us have been waiting to get our hands on one of those for a really long time. Well, we were re-asked to redo the i3 test with faster RAM after yeah, a while. Yeah, we limited to about 2600 megahertz during our first test, and here we're going to go all the way up to 3200. And bearing in mind the performance scaling we've seen from faster RAM on the i5, I really wanted to check it out. So, let's check out those benchmarks. Let's do it. Okay, Rich, what have we got here? Well, this is a Grand Theft Auto 5 fully maxed out with the Titan X overclocked. And uh, yeah, some interesting stuff here. Basically, well, you can see here that uh, as we ramp up RAM frequency, we get a sort of small bump to frame rates. And when the overclock comes in, then you get a much larger boost. So, you know, we've got like a good 15 frames per second uh, differential here between our slowest configuration here and the fastest. So yeah, well worthwhile, certainly. It seems to scale up exactly as you'd imagine. I mean, the overclocks are doing their job, but more so the memory boosts, you know, memory speeds. I think the way it works is that the faster you scale up CPU frequency to make the most of it, you've got to kind of scale up RAM to match. And there's some interesting supplementary data that we've got here. Well, first of all, let's take a look at i5 metrics here. And we actually get equivalent performance from our overclocked i3 with fast memory to an i5-6500 with slower 2133 MHz DDR4. So that's quite a remarkable turnaround. I mean, we've seen before that i3 with decent fast RAM can beat a 2500K, but this is a full like-for-like, -like, the same architecture compared, and we're getting uh, equivalent performance here. We had to go up to the 6600K or the 6500 with faster RAM to actually see any kind of differential between the dual and the quad. That's very interesting. Yeah, this game is really CPU bound, so it's a really tough workout. And we've got another one here, which is The Witcher has always been CPU bound. And, uh, uh, yeah, in this particular sequence. It's I Novigrad mean, City. Yeah, a lot of people benchmark uh, just wandering around the open world or the cutscenes, and well, basically, they don't stress CPU at all, but Novigrad City. Look at those frame time spikes. Yeah, the frame time spikes are pretty bad here, and uh, if you actually look at core utilization or thread utilization, uh, the i5 is maxed as well as the i3. I mean, even with the overclock in place, we are CPU bound here, which is quite remarkable. And again, what we're seeing here is uh, quite interesting because the i3 with fast RAM is actually slower than the overclock with slower RAM, uh, if you compare the orange and the red. Oh, so the here. clock speeds make more of a difference? No, 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 the other way around. The other way around. Yeah, the okay. memory is actually more important to performance here. Memory bandwidth is more important to performance than the CPU overclock. But if you have both, as you can see here with the yellow line. Best of both worlds. Best of both worlds, but even still, the difference is only slight. So now we're moving on to Far Cry. Now this game I've always thought is more of a GPU test. Well, well you'd be wrong actually because really? it has like one single thread that powers all of the others. So the faster your single thread speed, the faster your performance overall. But you can see here that we've got like a very stable pattern. Basically the faster the memory, the faster the game, and the faster the core frequency, the faster the game. And you can get some absolutely insane results if you actually have this with uh, an overclocked i5 or an i7, because Far Cry will actually use... Just gobble it up. It uses every kind of resource available. It's quite remarkable, really. And uh, yeah, you can see there with the frame time spikes that we are actually CPU bound here. I bet it's all the draw calls as it's streaming. I think it's just in. possibly, yeah. And also the fact that, you know, with using a Titan X overclocked, we are doing our best here to remove GPU as a potential bottleneck here. So CPU and memory performance takes center stage here. That's a marked difference. So, Crisis 3. Yep. Yeah, we've got two tiers of performance here, I'd say. If you look at the yellow line and the red line, this is the i3 overclocked to 4.44 gigahertz. Now, you'll note that even though we've got quite a difference in the memory bandwidth on our two readings here, performance is pretty much identical. Looking at the results, well, you're looking at about 
I don't know, just two or three frames per second difference across the whole duration. There's not really much to it. They're very clustered together. Yeah, definitely. But again, if you look at the uh, cyan line and the green line, which is the slower memory bandwidth on the stock i3, mm. again, there is like a sort of definitely a lower tier of performance there. And uh, comparing the best to the worst, there's a good 10 to 12 frame difference there. So overall, this is more of a, again, that benefits from a CPU. Yeah, and if you actually use a Core i7 processor here, the results go through the roof because this game uh, will actually utilize all eight threads. And there is actually a marked difference even between i5 and i7 performance here. It's a real stress test for a CPU. Just for reference, what settings are we running at here? This is everything absolutely maxed at that's, 1080p. That's not bad for an i3. That's very good for an i3, but other areas, uh, foliage heavy areas, really do suffer, whereas the i7, absolutely solid. And this is an odd one, Call of Duty, we yeah. see a lot of uh, odd CP demands on this, especially this sequence. Well, the frame rates are incredibly high here because the game isn't really that uh, reliant on GPU performance, so we've literally pushed CPU to the forefront here. You can see that there are differences as we scale up with memory bandwidth. Not that you're going to notice them when you're running at 250 <laughs> frames per second. No. But it's more of an academic, interesting test, really. You can run any of these processes and get a really good uh, experience here, i3, i5, i7. OK, Assassin's Creed Unity. Yeah, this game is mostly GPU bound. You can kind of see that by the grouping of the lines. But you can still see that with the i3, uh, we are seeing some differentials in certain parts of the scene where CPU takes point. So you can kind of see how the lines are grouping together and then spacing out again as we move between CPU and GPU bottlenecks. But for the most part, this will push an i3 and an i5 to the limit. But you can still get above 60 frames per second basically on all of the configurations here, except the i3 running with slower memory, then we can dip beneath that 60 FPS threshold. And that's really the sort of thing you need to bear in mind. This test, it puts CPU performance to the forefront and really and truly it's the lowest recorded frame rates that are sort of most important. It's interesting to see that how um, when you lower down to the crowd it suddenly spaces out all the you know the readings yeah but on this scene you yeah know, this scene is gpu bound and that depth you can see it's just it's just flatlined all that the results depth of field effect is the limiting factor there surprisingly enough now so, battlefield 4 is it's been going strong in our benchmarks for about three years yeah now. we're going to have four. to retire this one soon and you can kind of see why here because um, again there's not really that much of a differential here it's kind of more exaggerated here because we're using an i3 and you can see once again that the cyan and, and uh, red lines are at the bottom meaning that memory bandwidth is important mm. but again when you get to the top tier there isn't really that much difference between uh, the overclocked i3 with slower ram overclocked i3 with faster ram and you know even uh, the stock i3 with faster memory holds up pretty well there this we are mostly gpu bound here on an i5 and an i7 you really wouldn't be able to tell the difference at all no true and we're looking at a difference between 90 frames per second and 120 on the yellow line so. yeah and that's the important thing in the moment performance it's kind of much more important than the averages so last one, Shadow of Mordor. Shadow of Mordor, yeah. This is another test that I think we're going to have to retire at some point because we are basically GPU bound here. We're only seeing minor blips on that frame time graph. There's barely yeah, anything to see you know, on there. Just... Exactly, yeah. You're looking at like an eight frames per second difference, but you know when you're, when you're running at like 120 frames per second. It's a bit it's... negligible, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but you know, there will be a lot of games out there where you are GPU bound for the most part. And again, you know, an i3 really does run well regardless of which remedy you pair it with or what kind of clock speed you're running at. So yeah, Shadow of Mordor, it's just a pretty well optimized game all around. Well, after all that, it does look like faster RAM is the key to unlocking uh, the potential yeah. of the i3-6100. Yeah, the full potential of, the, of that particular chip. Yeah. Well, it's worth bearing in mind that our tests sort of artificially propel the CPU and the RAM to the forefront as the primary bottlenecks in the system. But it's the fact that our minimum frame rates rise as we increase RAM bandwidth and CPU speed that's the key here. So basically when the CPU is the limiting factor, the faster RAM will yeah. actually help. Uh, yeah, definitely. And 3200 megahertz really can make a difference. Yes. Yeah, I really liked uh, the i3-6100 when it came out and I was really surprised by the scaling in performance with better RAM. But better RAM, faster RAM, plus an overclock, that just takes it to a whole new level. 
Anyway, that's all we have for now. If you enjoyed this video, remember to give us a like and definitely subscribe if you want to support our work. That's all we have right now. Thanks for watching.